Let's do this. What's up, folks? This is your boy DT 2.0, and today we have the Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus G15 Consumer Review. Now, today, I know my videos are, are, are few and far in between, but that's only because it's hard for me to get these sometimes. And when I say these, I'm talking about these high-end demand laptops, and plus, the chip start shortage, right? Everybody knows that if you try to buy a 3070, 3080, 3090, 3060, or now a 3050, I don't know why the hell would Nvidia do that, uh, chip, they're either extremely high because these scalpers are trying to get them, or um, you have to get them while, when they're already in, a, let's say, a desktop, or uh, already in a laptop. So. The, the the demand or the supply is easing up for the consumer so uh it's these uh products are getting easier to get but anyway i've been trying to get this uh for a while now whether it was through asus's store directly or through best buy and it was always sold out and this was about a, a three weeks ago even when i tried to purchase an open box through best buy it would sell before i even complete the purchase and y'all know how that is when there's something you want that you can't get you start to want it even more even though you don't really need it and i don't need any of these right and i get it i feel the pain that's why you see those two uh consoles back there ps3 or three consoles ps3 ps4 and xbox one x because i refuse to buy down to these scalpers so i haven't upgraded my rig back there until i can get me a playstation that's sitting on the shelf in the store anyway if i touch the nerve my bad y'all not my bad so here it is and i've been enjoying it for the most part I know I don't sound too enthused, but there are some things that just irk me about it, which we'll we'll get into later. Um, but it'll probably not make this thing a keeper, but I'll leave that for my recommendations. But before we get into that, let's talk about my channel in general, right? Um, this is a consumer review, and I'm just giving you the perspective or opinion from the consumer, myself, who may or may not be experienced with dealing with computers. Uh, when all you want to know is, hey, if I buy this, when I get this mug home, is it going to work like it's supposed to or whether is it going to work like I want it to work? That's all. With that, I'll give you my loves, my likes, my dislikes, my concerns. And last but not least, uh, my recommendation. Um, is this thing a keeper or is it going back? Let's get into now, it. Before we get all into the guts of this uh, review or consumer review, let's talk about the specs. This thing sports the AMD Ryzen 9 5900HS. It comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM at 3200 megahertz, one terabyte SSD, the RTX 3070 Max-Q. And I know what y'all thinking, right? There is no such thing as Max-Q, but that is wrong in a sense. So let me explain it to you. If you go into settings, um, you can see that it says clearly Max-Q, even though these laptop or these, uh, even though the advertisements on the websites for these laptops don't actually say max Q. Okay. But it is confirmed for this one. This is a lower powered max Q version. So, and I'll get a B roll of this. Um, but if you go to help system information here and you scroll down, it says max Q technologies, third gen. So this is a max Q version, right? Maximum graphics power is 100 Watts. So um, I know folks will be hitting me in the comments. Oh, there's no such thing as Max Q is either 37 or bus. Wrong. That is wrong, right? For some of these laptops, you have to go inside of uh, NVIDIA's controls panel, go to help, um, and it's uh, so system information, and then it'll tell you on the list whether it's Max Q or not. So sorry, not sorry if y'all think that Max Q is, is a myth like some folks think COVID is. Anyway, um, 15.6. WQHD 165 Hertz display with 100% DCI P3 color gamut, which is one of the, one of my favorite color, the color, ga color gamut that I prefer. And that's why the Spider-Man background is so vibrant right now, right? Um, again, this is a 1440p display at four, uh, 165 Hertz. And I've been waiting to get my hands on something like this for a while now. I'm just a little disappointed overall in the performance and I'll get to that soon enough. So let's just talk about what you can get. On the left side, as you can see, you have your power input, HDMI, uh, a full Ethernet port. And when I say full, it's not like uh, on the Alienware M series um, where it's expandable and you have a, you know, there's a, you can have a small chance of breaking it. Uh, USB A and then two USB Cs. No Thunderball here, obviously, because this is a Ryzen chip. And also your um, headphone mic combo jack. In the back, 
right? Nothing really on the ass end, um, but there are some vents back here that's pretty tasteful, uh, in my in my opinion, and then some activity lights, right? And I'll talk about those later. Now, of course, like just like the um, G14, you have these little rubber notches because it does have the same, I guess, design as the G14, where it, where it lifts up, and I'll show that later. Uh, lifts up when you open the lid. And then on the right side, pretty plain Jane, right? You have another vent here, uh, and then a micro SD card slot and another USB-A slot. And that's the G15 in itself, right? Um, I kind of like the way the design is. If you look, really look at it, it looks exactly like the G14. I ain't gonna even lie to you. From the 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 the, uh, the dots matrix on the back, you know, uh, let's we can call it dot matrix. This one does not light up uh, to the tasteful. Um, and I'll flip this over. Almost dropped this motherfucker. Uh, Republic of Gamers established 2006 tab or label on the side. So nothing, nothing uh, too outrageous on there. Nothing flashy. Nothing dashy. Um, to this machine so um i do like the design it's really it's really low-key the complete polar opposite of alienware so uh compared to the g14 this is just its big brother that's not really its big brother or much of a big brother i do like the fact that even though the g14 and g15 are closely related they did do some things different with the big, bigger model and i'm looking at you alienware m series the m's m15 and m17 which doesn't have any differences whatsoever uh, with the G's, and I'm calling the Asus models G's. Y'all can use that if y'all want, and not like the M's, like the Alienware. Y'all can again, y'all can use that if you want. You get a bigger, bigger, better screen, uh, 165 hertz, better color gamut, higher resolution, Ethernet port. So I'd feel comfortable paying the extra 350 or 400 dollar difference in price because to me, it's worth it if it performs, which we'll get into later. Now on to my loves. Love number one, it's obvious. You heard me? The screen. I've been wanting a QHD display on a 15-inch laptop for a while now, just to see. Y'all know my love for a 4K on a 15.6-inch screen or 4K OLED on a 15.6-inch screen, or just 4K in general on a laptop uh, has been my thing. But I've been wanting to see how it, how it would look as 1440p on a laptop. This is the first one I've had in here. And at the same time, um, if I get this 1440p screen, just like the OLED, it had to have that wide color gamut, right? Um, sRGB is fine, and I ain't hating, but I prefer 100% Adobe RGB, or in this case, 100% DCI P3, because the colors to me just pop. And again, you can see that uh, with this background where, uh, and again, you can only see it if you put these put this laptop directly next to a laptop that's like a 1080p sRGB um, you then you would see the difference, but right now it just it'll just look the same. And you can say, yeah, I can adjust my color saturation and get it the same. And you can with some laptops, uh, but you don't have to with this one. Um, it's very vibrant and highly comparable, highly from my testing, highly comparable to a 4K display. Uh, yes, again, I'm a 4K OLED junkie. Y'all know, y'all see my monitor. I'm calling it a monitor still on my desk. Um, but I'll make an exception for this one because it just looks great. Um, even my son thought this was a 4K OLED while I was watching a video the other day that, and I was watching a video that didn't have a lot of blacks in it. Now there is a tad bit of light bleed, uh, you know, uh, down at the bottom. And if you really, really look in the right, um, I can't say lighting, the right darkness at, in the upper right hand corner. Um, but we all know that that's, that, that's uh, for, that varies from unit to unit. I think M MSI has the best manufacturing process when it comes to preventing light bleed of manufacturing screens that doesn't have any light bleed or very little. Uh, but to me, ASUS comes in a close second. Alienware, I'm not gonna lie, I'll put near the bottom, but that's just me being real. I had an M15 in here with a 1080p LCD screen early last year um, that bled so much. I think I had to. I thought I had to call 911. I ain't gonna even lie to you. It's my son has it now, and every time I go in his room and and um, uh, this my younger son has it now. Every time I go in his room and see that screen, I'm like, ugh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I got a lot of Alienware shit, but that doesn't remove the fact that some of their LCD screens are terrible when it comes to light bleed except for that 4K OLED, which has zero. And that's why I love it so much. Anyway, it's not as bright as I'd like, but it's okay. I think the M17 
uh, oh, Alienware M17 and Legion 7i are pretty much the only laptops that have a 500 nit brightness option on an LCD display. And I, I would have liked to see that, to have seen that here. Now, you can hit me in the comments if there's more out there. Uh, and if there are, that's fine. But from the ones I've tested, that's what I'm quoting. Um, but at the end of the day, the screen is an overall and definite love. Love number two, the design. It looks like the G14, but dark. And they did make a darker version of the G14. Don't get me wrong. And I know it was it was kind of rare to get a rare to have because everybody was loving that white, including myself. Um, but it's dark. And unless you're eating pizza and wings, this thing very rarely shows fingerprints. It'll show like some dust on it because it is dark, but it's it's metal. Right. And it's I mean, you have to hold it up to the light to actually see something uh, and it probably it's probably blown out on the camera that i have but um it I, I do like the way it feels it's like when i wake up in the morning after after sleeping it's cold steel it's cold steel um but this thing would not show fingerprints i thought they could do a little more with the key bed here because it's kind of just flat uh kind of look like a hp omen the cheap one but it's it's cool because with the G14 they had like some angles in here right where it dipped or the keyboard dipped in a little bit. This one is just flat with some um, port with some uh, speaker grills here, I, you know. So it is what it is. It is different than his little brother, as you can see, and I can conf and I can conf uh, a little I can forgive them for that. I love the way the vents in the back are designed, uh, and the lights in the middle that indicate whether it's charging, right here whether it's charging um, or if there's any SSD activity or if it's on or not, right? I don't have to open this thing up to check to see if it's still on. I, there's, a, there's a light right there that says it's on. So that's a good thing. Um, they did keep the fingerprint reader for the most part. Let me open this back up. And as you can see, it's working fine now. Uh, but earlier, I don't know what happened. You know, was, I was having trouble opening it up. So sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a little finicky. Um, you know, they did keep the fingerprint reader, which again, I love so far. It's not a Samsung phone, so it's not as fast on iPhone, the old iPhone. So it's not as fast. So don't expect it to be that fast, but it's there. They do have it. That is a windows. Hello feature. Um, it's still thin for a 15 inch laptop in comparison to any of the Alienware M series. And it's quite sturdy with very, with, with a very little screen flex. Now all screens have flex. Don't get me wrong, but it just depends on how much muscle you have to put in it. In, in order for it to start flexing. Um, I do like the separate buttons for the volume up and down right here and the mic mute and then the uh, armory crate shortcut kind of forces you to use it uh, in case you, and, and I won't go over armory crate in this review because I did it extensively in my older G14 um, review and it hasn't changed. Uh, but Armory Crate is just their version of Control Center. And last but definitely, definitely not least, uh, the way the screen flips up uh, the laptop to allow more airflow, just like the G14. So overall, the design is not in your face like other manufacturers could be, and that's fine. And I like this kind of like my alter ego, right? Batman, Bruce Wayne, Clark Kent, Superman. This is the alter ego. It's not flash and brash like the Alienware. And I'm not knocking Alienware because I love that. I love showing off sometimes, but sometimes if I wanted to take this and just low key game, this is the one for me. Um, but the, the design overall, a definite love. Surprisingly, that was all, all for my loves, only two. And that doesn't mean that this is not a great laptop, but just, I didn't just, I, I'm not just going to hug and love this thing or be, be a hugger. Uh, that's a term um, that I use all the time when somebody's being too soft on the people they're leading. Anyway, um, like number one, the fingerprint reader. Only a few of these gaming laptops out there even have Windows Hello features, and this happens to be one of them. I like the fingerprint reader this time because I thought they'd, I just like the fingerprint reader this time, not love, because I thought they'd do something different. It's fast, but not as fast, like I said before, as a Samsung phone or even an old iPhone fingerprint reader where it's just instantaneous. Sometimes I do have to hit it or touch it two or three times to get it to understand. So like some of y'all do y'all girlfriend. <laughs> now, before we jump to conclusions, right? I'm not saying that physically, like putting hands on females, just sexually. And I don't even know why I went that far. Anyway, I'm not talking about physical abuse, folks. Anyway, I like the way it does cast your fingerprint when you power this thing on so you don't have to touch it again. Anyway, so that's extremely convenient. Um, it is fast. 
is, is it as fast as facial recognition? Nah, nah, it ain't, but it is more secure. So that's why it's a like in my book. Like number two, the keyboard. I know everybody has their preferences when it comes to keyboards, and I do highly prefer either the Lenovo or Alienware keyboards. Everything else, to me, personally, will fall into second, third, or fourth, you know, or the garbage can, MSI. Anyway, uh, this will fall into the second tier, in my opinion. It does have good key travel, but I, I would have liked to have seen more resistance or feedback, much like the G14. I thought the G14 had just a little bit more feedback in, their keyboard, in that keyboard. Now, they're not mushy by any stretch, don't get me wrong, right? Um, but they are, and then they are, they aren't tactile either. The lighting is great, even though it's not perky, it's just zone. And I get it. They had to cut some corners, uh, for the price you're getting this computer, which I didn't mention that, right? This price, the price for this computer was 1850. I think I had a $50 coupon though. So was, I think it's normal price, 1899 plus tax. So they had to, to cut some corners, but if Alienware only charges 30 bucks to a $30 increase to get the per key versus their four zone, I'm pretty sure I would have handed them the extra 50, 30, 40, a hundred bucks um, to get a better keyboard or, a, a, you know, per key lighting. Now I normally keep my keyboard in one color, but Hey, I, I would love the option. Give let me, let me the consumer have the option of doing that. Anyway, um, the layout is great, like I said before, and I typed this review on it and I had very little errors. And the errors I did have, it was my own damn fault. Um, the page up and down keys are clearly separated um, along the side with the power button. I like that. The power button's away. It's also combined with the fingerprint reader. I like that. MSI. Um, lastly, I love the way the shortcut keys, I said before, are separated uh, from the main keyboard and you don't have to use function and press. Um, the only thing that uh, I would have liked to have seen added here was the mute key. You still have to function and press to mute the uh, to mute the sound, you know. So that sucks. Well, to me, it sucks. It's a little thing, but it is what it is. Um, the keyboard uh, overall is bright, but it's something about one zone or single zone that doesn't make the keyboard look premium, you know. Um, I think Alienware and Lenovo still has the keyboard game on lock, and I said that before as far as feel and look. I do like how the lighting do contrast better compared to the silver or white G14. And it actually changes color this time where the G14, it was just white. Um, so they look even better, even though it's probably the same lighting technology underneath or same LED lights that they use for the G15 under the keyboard overall. But at the end of the day, the keyboard is alike. It's not terrible by any stretch. Don't get me wrong, right? Um, cause like I say, it was easy for me to type up this review on it and it was, it's easy for me to get and play, and play a few games that I do. I don't only play a few games using the keyboard. Um, because I just, I'm just not that skilled yet. It is what it is. I'm not scared to skip scared. I'm not scared to throw myself out there, but anyway, sticking to the subject keyboard, a like in my book, like number two. And I should have combined this with the keyboard, but I didn't because I wanted to call it out on the zone and that's the trackpad. I like the G14 trackpad and this one, I like this one also. It's big, it's smooth, it's responsive and borderline and dare I say, Apple-like. I dared to myself to say that. Anyway, I put this trackpad below Apple's but even with Razer's, which I loved, right? The Razer's, yeah, they have some issues with their computers overall but that trackpad, I think they, they hired somebody from Apple's um, engineering team to, to come up with that thing because it's just, at that whole, that whole, M15, M15, that whole 15 inch line, the razor blade 15 line, the silver one was just a MacBook. That's all it was, was a Mac. It looked, I had it sitting next to my 16 inch MacBook. It looked ex exactly the same. Um, palm rejection has been a non issue and I haven't even thought about it to be, ex to, to be honest with you. I type on this thing and I don't have to worry about the, the, the cursor jumping out all over the place because I didn't have to, and that's a great thing. That's, that's a great thing. Scrolling is on point. So the few times that I did use the trackpad while I was scrolling through, and I can just show you guys here, and I'll B-roll some shit. You know, uh, I'll B-roll some shit, and I'll just search for anything, test. But you can see it's, it's extremely responsive, and it's also at 165 hertz goodness, you know, Anyway, scrolling is on point. So the few times that I did use it uh, with the trackpad when the mouse was, uh, wasn't available, it was okay. So this trackpad will fit the bill if and when you need it. Guaranteed. That was my like.
like number three, and it's a group thing, it's the port selection. Now for a laptop, it does give you a few options to make your experience better to USB type C's, to USB type A's, HDMI, Ethernet, micro SD card slot. Um, I would have liked to have seen an extra USB type A. Um, and I say that, for example, I can't use my Alienware keyboard with this laptop without a struggle because the keyboard has two, it needs two USB ports. And with this particular computer, they're, since they're on either side, as you can see, one is on this side right here, and then one is all the way over on this side with a bunch of blank damn space. What is up with that? Like I say, I know they had to cut corners somewhere, but mm, port selection? Really? Drake? Anyway, um, another recommendation was to put them, at least put them, if these were the only ports that you were going to give us, do like the USB-Cs and move, move the one USB-A port, because it does look a little crowded over here, to be honest. You could just move that USB-A port to the other side and then have two USB-Cs on one side, two USB-As on the other side, right? Um, but they didn't. But again, that's just for my use. You may have a wireless keyboard or a keyboard um, that... Um, only needs one uh, USB-A input or even a USB-C input. But in my use case, I cannot, can't use my external keyboard with this or the one I selected because of those ports on either side. Now, I can, can I use a dongle? Of course I can. Will I use a dongle? Of course I will, if I kept this thing. But everybody knows I got that Aurora R10 and that ain't getting replaced no time soon. But definitely the port selection is not a worry here. It is different than the G14. Um, so it's a like in my book. Like number three, the speakers. Oh, I'm sorry, like number four. And that's the speakers. Good range, decent volume, adequate, adequate. And I'm not saying it's great, but adequate for the size of this computer, adequate low end. Not, not a whole lot. Now, it ain't thumping. And it definitely ain't a 16 inch MacBook Pro, which I can't even brag about no more because I don't even have it anymore. But, um, but it is on par with Alienware, Lenovo, and Razer. And I'm talking when I say on par, it's like one, one A, one B, and one C. Um, MSI, on the other hand, still in the fuck, fuck, it's still in the trash with those Sparkomatic, Optimus, or realistic speakers that they they bought off of closing Radio Shack or Radio Shack that was about to close for business uh, 15, 20 years ago. I ain't even lying to you. And yeah, I'm dating myself, but I don't care. Uh, these speakers do get the job done, but don't expect amazing, right? They're just don't expect it, right? Most people that have these laptops, you know, they, they get some gaming headphones anyway. Um, they are loud enough to watch a video with someone else uh, without y'all crowding around the computer, but they don't replace headphones or external speakers in general if you need to hear every little thing in the game. And I can say that because, you know, like, for instance, like my monitor LG 4HCX that I have over there, which those speakers are outstanding on that, on that, on, I was about to say TV, uh, on that monitor. I can hear shit on Shadow of the Tomb Raider I didn't even know was there, you know, so it makes the replay value of some games sonically even that much better. You're not going to get that here. Get some great external speakers or a good set of headphones. But if y'all want to hear how they sound, and I know this won't translate well, uh, I'll just play something and I'll play just a little bit of this so I won't get a copyright hit, but it is what it is. Now, I only selected that song because of the, 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 the kick in it, right? And the range of it and the, 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 uh, the instruments. was It wasn't too much going on. Um, and then the, uh, the beat was real simple. So the, bass, the, the, the low end, you, I can't feel it, but I can feel it in, you know, I can feel it in my ears and I can tell it's there. Where if you had an MSI computer, it'd be like somebody beatboxing under the damn, uh, <laughs> under the speakers. Anyway, uh, speakers like my like number four. And that was all for my likes, folks. You know, so um, I'm not saying I hate this thing, but it's it's not as extensive and there's not that much going on here overall. So now on to my unfortunates and my unfortunate number one is was my unfortunate with the G14 and that's no camera. Need I say more? The only crazy thing about um, 
this thing not having a camera is Asus is sticking to their guns when it comes to their G series, right? Get your own damn camera is basically what they're telling you. I got to respect them for that, right? They're telling you this is a gaming machine and you don't want that cheap ass camera that will add to accommodate a few people complaining about no camera. I get it, Asus. I see you. I see what y'all doing and I'm liking it. I hate that it doesn't have a camera, but I'm liking that you're sticking to your guns. I get it. You know, so some companies just do that. Apple just does that. You know, Samsung just does that on some things. They stick into their guns. So they're making folks say, you know what? Maybe we don't really need a camera. Maybe we need to get our own shit. Um, you know, so, but <laughs> I'm just going to complain anyway. Put a damn camera up there and stop playing. Take the cameras out those garbage ass phones that you make and you'll be fine. And I'm not saying garbage as, as, as far as performance, because we know those, those phones uh, lean towards heavily towards gamings, but they're just too expensive and nobody has them in this. I, I, it, to me, they're just unnecessary. Now, if you have one, sorry, not sorry, right? Sorry, not sorry, but it is what it is. But they could easily just go to their old phones, right? They've been making these phones, those raw phones for a while now. Go to your old phones, go to the office next door and say, hey, let me get those cameras that y'all, those, those garbage cameras out those raw phones from two, three years ago that y'all ain't using. Boom, slap them in the computer. Problem solved. Anywho, um, you know, if they take offense to it, and I'm talking about ASUS, and I'm not talking to you about you folks with the with the ROG phones. If you like it, I love it. Um, that's it. That's your problem, or that's their problem. But most people get upset in their feelings when they're presented with the truth. Like my old lady. I'm probably going to get in trouble for that line. Hope she don't watch this. Dislike number two. Again, this is ASUS sticking to the guns by putting the power in the middle of the left side. They're not changing this design for nothing. You're going to like it because we, because we like it. That is, that's all, right? I get it. Overall, um, they, they stuck to their, their, their design, but to me, it just makes this thing looks un, look unprofessional when it's sitting on a desk, right? I, luckily, the power cable is angled. And I'll B-roll that, um, but still, it's still something coming out the side. I would like to see it in the back, but again, the, the, the design does not allow that to happen. Um, they they prioritize the design to have the hinge that flips up, uh, lifts up the bottom over that. So, um, from my few uses of it, um, if I have it plugged in here. And say the plugs, as you can see, my my uh, the plug for the laptop I have over there, and the cable goes that way. I can't open this thing; it kind of gets in the way. Um, I do, I can open it, but I just have to wrap the, you know, pull the cable out and uh, open it up. So remember, if you have this thing on your desk, uh, make sure that that power cable is going straight to the back, so it won't interfere with you opening this thing up, unless you have a laptop stand. Uh, anyway, is it a big thing? Nah, I'm just nitpicking. But I'm letting y'all know from my experiences that you may not, from the experiences from me that you may not hear from other reviewers. Um, I got to give it to you the only way I can. But yes, overall, they're sticking with the guns and telling us to deal with it. And it's not a bad thing, right? It's it's not terrible. It's just one thing that we can deal with. The only good thing is the, co the, po the, power. the power cable is angled and it makes it look a little bit cleaner. But not as clean as it would be as if, the, if they had the power in, in the back or in the rear like uh, MSI, Alienware, and even the Lenovo. Uh, which all have that extra junk in the trunk in the back that I always talk about uh, design that makes those laptops bigger, but more desktop like and clean looking when sitting on your desk. So again, I'm nitpicking. I ain't got to like it. So it's a dislike. And my final hate, and I hate using that word and I said this shit before, right? But it's a dislike in, in the dislike category, but it's a hate. It's the, those goddamn stickers. Why are they continuously putting crooked stickers on these $2,000 laptops? Bro, what? Come on, man. Come on. Y'all can do better than that. I'm going to say it nice. Y'all can do better than that. Do better. Let's just talk real quick before I get to my concerns about two things that folks ask me about all the time. Um that I'll probably get hit in the comments for and other people answer. But for those folks that don't have a chance to have these, because this is not a popular, popular computer, 
uh, for all intents and purposes, is the battery life and uh, fan noise. So first, battery life. I normally talk trash about uh, you know not caring about battery life because this is a gaming computer, but I'll speak on it anyway, right? You could eke out four, five, maybe six hours um, on this computer. So yes, you can take it to school or work, and it'll last depending on your use. Depending on your use, meaning don't game on the damn battery. Come on, that don't make no sense, man. Right? With, don't game on the battery on no gaming laptop because you're only gonna get 30, 45 minutes at tops an hour. Then you won't be able to do do shit. Um, with the screen with this resolution, the power of the 3070, uh, this thing will heat and eat your battery for lunch. So just don't do it. Doesn't make any sense anyway. Who games on batteries? And if you take offense to it, I'm talking to you. Don't do it, right? And I'm only saying that, and I'm, I'm, again, I'm not beating up on people because everybody has their preferences, but, you know, I, when, I, when I play games, I want the maximum performance. And the only way you're going to get maximum performance without this thing keeling over in 30 to 45 minutes is to have it plugged in. Plain and simple, to have it plugged in. So if I have this thing not plugged in, I'm either doing word processing, YouTube watching or scrolling, doing some research or doing a review. So should you. And second of all, and I'm done with the battery, is the fan noise. Now the fan noise on this thing, as I compare it to other laptops I've had, is, eh, I, I won't say it, uh, unintrusive. I won't say that. And I actually wrote that in my review, it says it's very unintrusive. But when I put this thing, when I open up uh, uh, Armory Crate and I put this thing in turbo, which they don't give you to do the, they don't even give you the option of doing turbo um, when it's not plugged in. It's not, it's, it says this mode is currently unavailable on your PC. Um, that doesn't mean it's not unavailable. It, 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 it shows up after you plug it in. But um, when you do have this thing on, in turbo, uh, the fans, and you're playing a game, the fans do kick up. Now, are they loud as the, M15, the M15s, which are, in my opinion, the loudest probably across any line of computers? No, but they're right under. So if, if fan noise doesn't bother me, right? So I don't mind it. If I'm playing a game and, 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 uh, and I'm getting into it, I'm not really concerned about the, the fan noise. I'm more into the game. But the good thing about um, this thing not being as loud as the, uh, or the fans not being as loud as the M15 is... The, the, the speakers can kind of compensate for that to where it's fan noise and an equal level or higher level of sound coming from um, the, uh, the the speakers. And the good thing about Armory Crate um, is, see right here it says GPU fan, zero RPM, uh, CPU fan, zero RPM, because they're off right now because I have it in silent mode, um, system acoustics. Right, so it'll actually give you an estimate of how loud your fans are. Right, right now it says 3 dB. Right, 3 dBA. Um, but right now I have the fans. Uh, the fans are off because I have it in silent mode. The GPU is not being the the um, the, um, the GPU is not being used. It says uh, power saving, and the CPU usage is only 15. Well, now it's one percent. So very little juice is being. Uh, wasted right now because of my function. So when you take this thing out again, when you take this thing out and I'm referring back to battery and you have it in this mode and you don't do much with it, it'll last. So if I go down here to battery, right, it says 97%, 10 hours remaining. Am I gonna get 10 hours? No, because I'm not doing much with it. So it's estimating 10 hours, but um, you're not gonna get 10 hours out of this, right? I guarantee. So that's fan noise and that's battery life. Now on to my concerns. Now, I originally wrote that I don't really have that many concerns, right? And overall, when we're talking reliability, I've had three of the models so far, two G14s and then this G15, um, and I haven't had any issues with them, right? It stays, I'm not going to say relatively cool. Cool for the most part, depending on, on what you're doing. If you're gaming, this thing could heat up. I'm not going to even lie to you. All right, and the thing about this thing heating up, right? Because I was playing Neo 2, um, and whoo, it was smoking. Let's just say that. All right, CPU was like at 89, uh, GPU was hovering at 72, and I'll I'll put some stats up here uh, later, um, you know, to to show you guys. But um, the thing that I don't like about this that has a concern for myself um, is because the vents are here in the front, right? When you close, when you close it, 
the air blows out the back. But when you have it open, which you'll be doing anyway most of the time, then the air blows on this black thing right here, right? This black chin um, right here. Um, this chin gets hot. And that's a concern for me, right? Like hot to the touch. That's a major, major concern for me. How long before that heat starts interfering with my display? And I've read some reviews of, of some folks on bestbuy.com that there's some folks that was, were having trouble with their displays. Um, so that's a concern for me uh, in general because again, I was surprised that I had to I had to check, have my son test it himself just to see because I thought I was, is this normal? It's not normal, right? Because again, all of these other designs, they have the fans blowing out the sides or come straight out the back. But because of the design of this one and you have the vents here, right? It's just blowing down and then traveling up. So it's hitting this black piece right here. I, I have a serious, serious issue with that. Would it do some damage? I don't know, but if I had to take take my my uh my take a guess at it i would say it would after after a while but that's my major major concern right but all, everything else is great the keys don't feel cheap it hasn't crashed or hiccups on me i had a few quirks with the keyboard lighting or flashing but i think that's a that's a settings issue that i just need to learn how to use this motherfucker like it's like it's supposed to be um uh, they, you, you know, because right right now they're set to dim. I have them off right now, but they're set to dim uh, when you're not using it. So like if I'm watching a video, uh, the keys will, will dim out. Apple keyboards does that all the time, right? That's like the, the normal uh, setting. But for this one, it's a setting. I can choose to keep them on if I want. But again, I don't know how to use the Aura software yet, um, but it's probably a, a settings thing. I, I did have a few quirks with the... Um, Fingerprint reader, sometimes it it reads me just like that. Other times, it doesn't believe it's me. Yeah, right. And I'm not used to that because normally if I'm using my phone or something, uh, especially when I have my Samsung phone uh, that with, with the fingerprint reader under the screen, it just like that. So at the end of the day, the this thing is solid overall. So... I do have confidence moving around with it and taking it out if I'm on the go. So no concerns about, you know, like, and I'm gonna refer to it again, cheap ass HP computer that like if you drop it, it'll probably crack into a hundred pieces. Nah, this thing is pretty solid overall. So no, the only major concern, cause normally I end my concern portion with no major concerns. Well, there is a major concern here. My major concern is the heat that's being applied to this base. That's it, that's it, but that's a big it. Now on to my performance area, and um, and I'm gonna cut and probably do some some rolling on this uh, so you guys can see. But I do I did my normal test, and you guys know if you've you've, you've been here before, I do Time Spy Extreme, which is a 4K gaming test. I also do Port Royal, which is a ray tracing test, and I do a Time Spy Extreme test. I always fuck that up. Time Spy Extreme stress test. Try to say that five times fast. And then I do a real world test of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. But also I play other games, right? I play NBA 2K, and I'll do that in this video. I play NBA 2K1. I also play, uh, uh, this time I'll play um, Red Dead 2. And then I'll play Neo 2 um, at always, always, always at native resolution of the monitor, or in this case, the screen that I'm using, and try to basically try to break it, right? Try to break the game, not the computer itself. So going back to time spy extreme and i'm comparing this with three other computers right i'm com comparing it with its little brother the g14 which has the 3060 max q i'm comparing it with the alienware m15 which has a regular power 3070 and i think it's 125 watts this one is max 100 watts and then i com of course just for shits and giggles i compared it to the r10 which has a 3070 full regular desktop 3070. So with that um, 4K gaming on Time Spy Stream, the G15 scored a 4115, 4115. The G14 scored, excuse me, a 3708. M15 scored a 5131, and R10 scored a 6358. Now, as you can see in my graphic, there's only a 10% difference 
between the G15 and G14 when it comes to 4K gaming, that, that 4K gaming test. And I know real world is different, but I mean, come on. 3060 Max Q to a 3070 Max Q is only 10%. And as a matter of fact, the estimates for Battlefield 5 were exactly the same. I think it was like 85 frames per second. So I'll, I'll get to that in my recommendation on what I think about that. Anyway, moving on to Port Royal tests. Um, G15 scored a 49.81. G14 scored a 45.03. M15 scored a 63.91. And then the R10 desktop, of course, blew everybody out the damn water with an 81.94. Um, again, its little brother is nipping on its heels at only a difference of about of, of about nine percent between the 3070 Max Q and then the 3060 Max Q that's in the G14. Ooh. Ugh. Right. Meanwhile, the M15 and the R10 in both the um, the Time Spy Extreme 4K test and this poor raw ray tracing test um, for the M15. It was a 25 to 30 percent increase in performance between the 3070 Max Q and the 3070 125 watts Max Q. And then a 55 or for Port Royal, a 64 percent difference in performance between the 3070 Max Q and then the um, the full desktop 3070. So um, big, big dividends being added or paid when you choose a regular, when you do your research, you know, for, the, for these laptops and get a regular mobile 3070 with the 125 watts. Um, and I think some laptops have 140 watts, it just depends on what you get. Anyway, for the Time Spy Extreme Stress Test, now it gives you a percentage, right? But it's really either anything over 97% is a pass. Right. But the, the only reason that I run this test is because it runs that time spy extreme test 20 times in a row. Right. And um, I do that because I also want to check the temperatures of the computer while it's while it's going. Right. Um, so G, all of them pass G14, G15, M15 and then R10. They all pass. Uh, overall, right? There was only like a maybe a one percent difference between all of them, um, but surprisingly, for the 4K Time Spy Extreme stress test, the CPU and GPU stayed relatively cool. And, but in real world, when I was playing Neo, it wasn't cool. So I don't know if they did something. I'm not going to accuse them of anything. Anyway, so let's go to real world um, testing. So I played Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And for G15, and again, everything is on ultra. And I'm a, I, with that, I either turn ray tracing off, test everything on ultra, and then I turn ray tracing off, on or off, and with everything on ultra. I don't know if I messed that up or not, but who cares? It's the liquor. Uh, but on a G15 with RTX on, 53 frames per second. With RTX off, 74 frames per second. When we take its little brother and do the same thing with RTX on, and again, it's I know it's running at 1080p. Nobody don't have to put it down in the comments. I know um, with RTX on, it's running 60 frames per second, and with RTX off, it's run, it's at 83 frames per second. With the M15, RTX on 62 frames per second. With RTX off, 85 frames per second. And with the RT with the uh, R10. RTX on 72 frames per second and with RTX off 102 frames per second. So the only the only difference in testing here was to make it somewhat even is I dropped the resolution of the M15 because the M15 has that 4K OLED and the R10 I'm using a 48 inch um, 4K LED or 4K OLED monitor. Um, I dropped the the, uh, the resolution to 1600. To match to nearly match could I drop it into 1440 I could have but I don't think it would have made much difference uh, well it would have made a little bit of difference maybe about 10 percent anyway but as you can see when compared to the G14 um, seven frames per second and nine frames per second difference so let's review this really and I'm just talking G14 and G15 because everybody's going to ask 
You know, which one do you like better? Which one should I get? Which one this? Which one that? So, and I'm not, hey, I get it. When it comes down to spending this much money, you want all your questions answered by the folks that have these things in their possession. And I'll just happen to be one of them that had both in their in his possession. So the, for Time Spy Extreme test 4K gaming between the G14 and G15, there was only a 10% difference. Advantage, G15, of course. For Port Royal Ray Tracing tests, again, G14 and G15, it was only a 9% difference. They both passed the stress test with roughly the same temperatures. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, seven, seven frames per second difference and a nine frames per, per second difference at max resolution of both. Um, and I would say that um, with the pixel density of the 1080p screen on the G14, it'll probably roughly look nearly the same, to be honest with you. It's just because, it's a, because it is a smaller screen. So that's it for the performance. I will do some gameplay after this, but before that, let's go to my recommendation. And then y'all can, you can watch the gameplay if you want, because all you'll just hear me doing is just yelling, um, you know, and then make your decision on which one or how it performs. So do I recommend the Asus ROG Zephyrus G15, this model, right? Because I know there's a model out there with the 30 in it. This is the one with the 3070 Max Q. Um, to put, put it to you straight, uh, every computer I have reviewed or I have or reviewed is recommended, right? Um, unless I have some major issues with them. And I can say for the most part of it that um, I have a major concern, but not a major issue with the heat on the uh, base of the screen. Um, I have not had any issues with this computer overall, but for those that are trying to decide between this and the G14, you have to ask yourself, how important is that larger screen and increase in resolution is to you? because I don't think the graphics cards, the 3070 Max-Q versus the 3060 Max-Q should be a big factor in your decision. Um, if it's not that important, and I'm talking screen, the screen size and the resolution, then the G14, to be honest, is your baby. Because at the end of the day, if you're looking at these two laptops as an option, you're trying to save some money and there's nothing wrong with that. You can put that $350 to $400 that you save getting the G14 to good use in games or accessories to make your gaming experience overall new and improved and a, and a hell of an upgrade and then more enjoyable. When it comes to comparing this thing to the M15, um, I think the M15 is in another category or another tier, right? So with a performance watch for just, again, for this model of the G15. Why? Because you look first, you're looking at spending an extra $600 on average, depending on if you hustle Dell and don't select the 4K OLED, which adds about 160 to 170 bucks, at least when I bought it. Um, but with that $600, you get more RAM, that 32 gigabytes, a better performing graphics, a better performing graphics card on average, 25% during these tests, a better keyboard in my opinion. Um, it's flashy, it looks like a gaming keyboard, so if you like that, that's a plus. A better overall design with the ports in the back. Um, louder fans, which are understandable, understandable with the amount of power being wielded by the M15. Um, you still get Windows Hello with Toby tracking, but again, that's only with the 4K model. And last but certainly not least, you get a damn camera. So as a matter of fact, on the, on the M15, you get two cameras because the Toby is one camera and then you still get its camera at the top uh, in the middle. So do I recommend it? Only if you need that 1440p, 165 hertz screen. But most gamers today stick to 1080p anyway. And in that case, the G14 is some pocket money you know, and I'm I'm uh, I'm a reference uh, the first coming to America. Do not take my pocket money. Uh, uh, the G14 and some pocket money will do you just fine. Or if it's not pocket money, use that money for some headphones, a good mouse, external uh, keyboard, a new monitor. Use it for anything else, or just save it until you can afford to get all. Of, you know, until you until you can afford to get all what you want. Right, the monitor, the keyboard, and the mouse. Um, with that being said, overall. Um, I'm not going to tell you if you should buy this or not. I'm just giving you my opinion. And for me, this thing is not a keeper. Does it mean that I don't like it? No, it doesn't mean that I don't like it. Um, I like it because it does play some games um, great. It just runs a little hot when I'm playing them. Um, and I love the size. I'm a big, big fan 
of the QH, the WQHD screen, big fan of 165 hertz, and definite big fan of 100% DCI-P3 color gamut. You know, so I'm not saying that I hate this thing. I just, yeah, I thought that it could have do, could have did better. But I think they make a big range of laptops, and they couldn't put it all in this one because they didn't, they wouldn't get, have anything left for the next tier. So I think that's what they're doing, right? They're keeping this thing in its own lane. So you can say, oh, I don't want to, I want to be in this swim lane. Let me move over into the next tier and get one of their better computers with the better graphics card or with a bit, with the better cooling or with the, you know, you know, they make that, that duo with the extra screen in there. So, um, for what it is, it's great. I'm not saying don't buy it. I'm not saying it's, it's, uh, it's not a great computer by any stretch, by any stretch. Cause I do like the design. I like the screen keyboards. Great speakers. Fine. You know, I just, I just thought they, and it's not their fault. I thought they were pulling a sham on us uh, with the 3070 and not telling us it was uh, 3070 max cube, but just telling us what the voltage was. Um, so I think if this thing had a regular, uh, you know, 125 watt 3070 in it, it would be the fucking one. I'm not going to even lie to you. And it, it, to be honest with you, it will probably, performance-wise, with this screen, it will probably go head-on with the Alienware M15. Telling you, it will probably go head-on with the Alienware M15, and I probably beat it. But that's just my opinion. I'm only one person. Anyway, with that being said, thanks for watching, folks. If you have any questions, hit me in the comments, and we'll, and I say we'll, all of us, uh, will get back to you. And I say we because, again, um, when I started these videos, I didn't expect to get a whole lot of subscribers. I just wanted to bullshit with some people that have, you know, like interests. Um, but it's, it's small in a small sense, becoming a computer, uh, computer community where we, I don't have to always answer every question because somebody's going to jump in and answer it, you know, not for me, but answer it. And, uh, because they may be more experienced than me and I don't mind that. Right. This, even though this is a channel that I make videos on, I expect everybody to provide input and help everybody else because that's what we do. Um, we love tech, we love gaming, and if you're like me, we love helping each other. And of course, we love talking shit. So, in the end, we just want to chat with some people that just understands us. <laughs> Again, uh, thanks for watching. This is DT 2.0. Peace, and y'all stay out of trouble. As y'all can see, now that I pulled it, plugged, pulled it, plugged it in, the turbo option shows up, and it's so selectable. But as soon as I unplug this thing, blue goop. Blanks, and sooner or later, this turbo, turbo option goes away and it goes back to solid. So, um, just just so you know that this thing will not allow you to just kill it in 30 minutes. Plug it back in, screen blanks, turbo option becomes turbo becomes option again, and it automatically goes back to turbo. Um, so let's get into some gameplay. And here we are, Shadow of the Tomb Raider again. Max graphics settings at 1440p, which is the max resolution. Um, of the, the screen that I have here. So everything is opened up for it to perform as great as possible. And the reason why I do this area every time, because even when I had the M15, uh, M M15 here with the 4K OLED, OLED, OLED screen, um, it struggled, especially that, that M15 with the OLED screen, it struggled with once I left this cave and all of the foliage and mountains and all of that other stuff uh, started showing up. It struggled. So I'm going to play it here just to see how it performs. But right now I'm running at 59 frames per second. So let's see what it does when I get outside. And into this sunlight. Well, right now it's pretty smooth. Still running at 58 frames per second. So... And again, just look look at the scene. It's just buttery smooth on this particular game. All right, even the bird flying in the air there. It's just buttery smooth. Oh, we got some we got some slip ups here, but we good. Fans starting to kick up as you can hear.
I'm sorry. No one may enter. Oh, we're gonna have words later. So this is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Yeah, I didn't get all deep into it like I normally do, but man. We'll see the Indiana Pacers and the 2010 team. Here's the starting group for the Indiana Pacers. They've got Sabonis, Malcolm Brogdon out there with Levert, and it's Brissett. That was a quick foul for him there. The Wilson certainly called it in close. I'm not gonna fool right now, but I got the screen dim so just so you can they can have better contrast uh, for the video. But um, I'm just again I'm just playing just to be playing, and LeBron just got burnt. I had somebody comment about this playing NBA this angle, but I've been playing NBA games like at this angle for a long time, and I'm not gonna stop. I just refuse to stop. I like I like to play it in broadcast view. Instead of that, you know, um, like you would play if you were you were on a basketball court. Oh shit! Let me get a sip on that one. That's what I like about NBA 2K overall. Yeah, they get some bad reviews, but that's just like Madden. That's just because it, you know they pretty much make the same games every year and they make a few you know player changes and everything. But you know, but there's a reason for that. And if you love basketball like I do. You don't mind that, right? I don't buy them every year. I only buy them once every couple of years. But as you can see, performance-wise, this thing is no problem on NBA 2K. Now, this is Horizon Zero Dawn, but as you can see in here, the fans have kicked up to their maximum, and I'm going to be quiet in a minute. But at the same time, the volume of the game just pretty much swallows it. So I'm going to be quiet for a minute and then let y'all hear it. And the fans just calm down, but they probably will ramp up when I start fighting these clowns over here that's been kicking my ass for the last few days um, because I don't play this game as much as I should be in order to be successful. Try to get way away from these mugs. My aiming on here is terrible. Those scrappers must be salvaging metal. Surprisingly, I like this game, and I like the fact that it came out for PC. You know, you, we know this was at one point a Sony exclusive, but I like the way that Sony allowed us to, uh, I say us, like, you know, like they did it directly for me, but, you know, allowed this game to be done. I hope they do it with the other ones, right? I think they'll sell a lot more damn games, but I think they're more interested in selling a lot now, a lot more uh, PlayStations. You can hear those fans kicking up because, again, this this game could stress it out. Like this, is, I, I could compare these graphics almost to Tomb Raider, maybe one tier below Tomb Raider. Uh, but man, just listen to those fans. And if they bother you, sometimes the speaker on the iPhone, and which I use to record most of the time, uh, draws out more sound than it should. But um, it's just so. In, in essence, of what I'm trying to say is, it sounds louder than it actually is. But it doesn't bother me because the sound of the uh, speakers are, are great in the, for, uh, for this uh, particular pur purpose. And I'm just going to go down here and kill myself, commit some suicide. Uh, just so y'all can hear it get loud.
All right, before I get too deep into this, that's Horizon Zero Dawn. Now I'm playing um, Red Dead, but this particular scene right here, or this particular part of the game is very, very GPU intensive. Um, and y'all know I don't I don't adjust any of these settings for these games at all. I just put them on max and just roll with it to let you know what the performance of the GPU is at max settings, right? The screen comes with 1480, 1440p. I'm gonna run it at 1440p. I wanna see every little thing or try every little thing. Now, uh, to its defense, Red Dead, Red Dead Revolver 2 does have a shit ton of options when it comes to um, adjusting your GPU settings, right? Um, but the thing I, I do like about it is up here in the upper left hand corner It shows how much when you change start to change things It shows exactly how much of your video memory it'll eat up. Does that equal a change in performance? Sometimes but as you can see right now it says hey you're only using 5.8 gigs of 8 gigs of memory So I should be fine, right? I should be cool going up to the refresh rate of 165 but yet in this particular scene with all of this snow, right? I'm only running at once it starts, 74, 41, 21 frames per second, right? And again, that's just this scene, right? With all of the, the water and the snow and the wind and all of that, you know? So, but graphically, it looks good, right? It looks good. So if I drop down some settings, I'm pretty sure um, it will be even better. But y'all you know, know how I am. I can't wait to play this on my LG 4A CX. And you hear no fans kicking up? This game, I just downloaded this like two days ago. This game looks awesome. You know, I've been having some issues with it as far as getting the settings right on the big computer over on the big dog over there. All right, trying to run it at 4K because it just is it's it's tough. But for this one, running at 1440p, it's playable. Um, I'm not playing competitively, right? This is just a single player game, so I can roll with it like this until some action kicks off. And it's time for me to start aiming and shooting, and then uh, I need to to change the the settings to get the performance down or maybe when I leave this snowy area um, it'll get better but anyway that's Red Dead Revolver 2 and here's a game I've been steadily and consistently um, getting my ass kicked in I ain't gonna even lie to you and I'm not talking about competitively with other people I'm just talking about the game itself right this Neo 2 and we all know if you ever played a Team Ninja game they give two shits about whether you in the game or not. You're going to get your ass beat until you until you learn the pattern of whoever you fighting to the to the book, to the T, you know. And that's why I like this game because when you do beat something or somebody, you you get a sense of accomplishment. There's no beating around the bush. They don't even give you an option. I don't even think I have not tried cuz again, I just downloaded this game just recently. I don't even think they give you an option to drop it down to easy. I just been getting bludgeoned by like the first fucking boss, and I'm about to go get bludgeoned by him right now. But I'm, right now, right, I'm not gonna try to win. I just want to show y'all that this thing is just running uh, at uh, top uh, resolution at, at, at the 1440p uh, with all everything on ultra. So um, let me make sure I got. But this thing plays. This is nothing but like Ninja Gaiden all over again. If you, for for those folks that played Ninja Gaiden before. Whoop. Yeah, this big motherfucker right here been whipping my ass. I tried to bum rush him, but he wasn't trying to hit at. He has a lot of range on that damn axe or uh, battle axe he has. I'm gonna use this tree. If somebody know how to play this game, please let me know. 
My son didn't play this. I might just beat this mug in front of y'all. Uh uh. Come with those double and triple licks. That's when I get beat the fuck up. Oh, anywho, you really gotta learn this mug patterns, and I ain't hating. It is what it is. But I was running at 60 frames per second, but and that's only because this game doesn't give me the option in the settings to go above that. So I, I hit a consistent 59. But as you can hear, the fans, that's the loudest, uh, that's the loudest that they're going to get. And let me take off my mic real quick just so y'all can get up. And when I put the mic closer, it'll probably gonna sound cold. When I put the mic closer, it'll probably sound worse than what it actually is. But I just want to let y'all hear it. But at the same time, the speakers and the music of this game is pretty, you know, kung fu-like. Uh, like the old kung fu movies so i'm gonna keep playing this game as much as possible until i get it down packed because i need that old school 2003 2004 ninja gaiden the new one that came out on the first xbox or the second xbox uh sent, first xbox sense of accomplishment and when I, yeah yeah so anyway that's gameplay thanks for watching y'all see y'all next time